Uh, there's nothing greater than love in our life. I hope you all agree. Love is great. Because of love, the light began. And because of God's love, the Jesus came. And because of Jesus' love, he died on the cross for all of us. So, author of Hebrew to end his letter with love. As you all know, if you're not just visiting today, or you know, missing many like some uh, services that we've been studying the book of Hebrew, and we are toward the end of that. And then author of Hebrew the ends his whole letter or book you know, with love. You know, if you call First Corinthians chapter thirteen as book of love and, and talks about what love is, that this chapter thirteen of Hebrew tells us how to love in a way. Now, Hebrew will end, or well, the author will end this book. It's Hebrew chapter 13, verse 22. Okay. And is that? Yeah. Can you read this? It says, Brothers and sisters, I urge you to bear with my word of exaltation. So, author of Hebrew saying, so All the things I've done talking to you is my word of exaltation. I would say, Many words of exaltation. How long is about. 12 chapters long, and then he said, for in fact, I have written to you quite briefly. After all 12 chapters of talk, this author says, I just talked to you very briefly. You know, for me, it's like, wow, if this author tried to say fully how long that might be, right? Now, I'm going to start the chapter 13, which is the last chapter of Hebrew today, and then Pastor uh, Parker will end the whole book the next Sunday. Now, most of New Testament epistles have some structure in a way, and it talks about theology, it talks about life application. Now, for example, Book of Romans talks about theology from first chapter 1 to all the way 11, and then starting chapter 12 to the rest of chapter 16 that talks about application. Now, this book of Hebrew put all the application in one chapter, which is chapter 13. <laughs> all of them one shot. And if you can summarize that, it will be love all. That's why I put the title, love all. The author of Hebrew are telling us, love all. Now let's read chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 today. I'm just going to read this. It says, keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in the prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage be a bad kept pure, for God will judge the adulterers and all the sexual immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can be more mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same Yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by eating ceremonial food, which is of no benefit to those who do so. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of the animals into the most high uh, place as an, a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him in outside the camp, bearing the great disgrace he bore. For here, we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. That is to come. And though Jesus, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly Profess his name. 
And do not forget to do good and to share with others for which, for we, the such sacrifices, God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they kept watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Amen. Now, this author is combining, putting all these things together, right? And like I said before, in summary, the author is telling us, love all, but how? And that's what the author is explaining. Book of Corinthians, chapter 13, talks about what love is. Now, this Hebrew, chapter 13, is telling us, if you love all, let me show you and tell you how you should love all. Many different faces you're going to experience throughout your life. Many relationships you're going to have. But you're not going to be able to love everybody the same way. You can't. You don't have to. You shouldn't. Okay. There's a different relationship and there's a different way to love. And that's what we're going to study today. You know, in four different, uh, I guess, uh, categories you can call that, and, and author is saying that how to love others and how to love yourself and how to love Jesus, and how to love God. How to love others, how to love yourself, how to love Jesus, how to love God. We know Jesus is God, but it's the author is saying, okay, this is a way to love Jesus, this is a way to love God, the children of God, right? So let's think about this. How to love others. Have you thought about it? I know we tell each other we need to love others. And the Bible tells us and tells you, love others. But do you know how? Do you know the different relationships you have and how to love all those people? So, the others, including here, in the fellow believers, strangers, people in prison, your own spouses, and leaders. Of course, there's a lot more than this list, but this is a sample of list the author is telling us. So, so first thing is how to love your fellow believers, verse 1. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Now, when it says uh, love one another, that's fellow brothers, uh, fellow believers. That when we have fellow believers at church, or any place you might know, then you should treat them like your own brother and sisters. Now, there's a problem. Because a lot of people don't like their own brothers or sisters. So if I was teaching to treat each other like your own brothers and sisters, we might not like that. And sometimes I tell my brother, please treat me like stranger. <laughs> because sometimes we are treating strangers better than our own brothers and sisters. Right? So that is why it's so important for Christians to have good relationship at home. It is so critically important for Christians to have good relationship with your parents. Because you're called God, the creator, your father. And when you don't have a good relationship with your father, then when you call God your father, you're not going to have that good feeling. And the author of the Hebrew challenges, and the, the Paul is challenging everywhere, you treat each other like your brothers and your sisters. Treat each other like your own family members. And if you don't like your family members, you have a problem. So have a good relationship with your own family first. That way, when you come to church, when you have seen the fellow bro- uh, believers, there's no problem for you to love them, treat them like your own brother and sisters. This is how we should love them. And it also says, keep on loving. It's not once in a while. It's not here and there. It's not like whenever you feel like it. It's a like keep on loving. What does that mean? That means like you have to treat each other Fellow believers, like your brothers and sisters, your own family, no matter what. Keep on loving. This is how we should love our fellow believers. When you come to church, and I hope and pray, the size of church like we have, there should be no strangers in our church, right? Hopefully, everybody will know each other enough, say, yeah, this is my brother, this is my sister. And I would treat him like that. I treat her like that. And they treat me like that. Right? Because we know how to love each other. We call ourselves JBC family. Say it with me. JBC family. 
Okay? And I hope it means something to you. JB's family. Now, when I go out there, like we call them Moon family, right? And I better know every member in Moon family. I say, oh, yeah, he's a Moon family. Moon have what, five of us, now it's seven. Now it's eight. Praise God. <laughs> Little one. Ezra. <laughs> you know? I better not forget them, right? I should know all the faces, their characters, and their desires. You know, when I say Moon family, when you say JBC family, and I hope that we will know each other pretty good. I know eventually, hopefully, we'll grow so big that you might not know that, right? One of the pastors I know, they say, when I went to church, I memorized 300 names of people, and then my brain fried. No, no more. I cannot handle it anymore. One of these days, I hope we can be that way. But even then, we should have that family together. JBC family will treat each other like my own brother or sister. Know how to love each other. Now it goes on to strangers. How to love strangers. Do not forget. Verse 2 says, to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Now, how to love strangers? You cannot love strangers the same way like you love your fellow brothers. You cannot just go on and treat your strangers like your own brothers and sisters if you can. Hallelujah. But most people can't. So author of Hebrew is very practical. You don't know them. So at least be hospitable, right? Now, is it easy for us to do that? No. It's getting harder because we are living in a very dangerous society. We cannot trust anymore. I used to remember the first time I came to this country years ago when I was driving and somebody in the street and they're just waving this. I just, no problem, I stop. There's no fear there. Like, oh, somebody's walking on the street, highway, or oh, let me pull over. And they say, oh, hey, do you need a ride? Do you know what people these days? They call. <laughs> say, I'll call for you. Because <laughs> I don't know you. There's too many thieves, robbers, shooters. So many people doubt each other, distrust everywhere. The church is not having an open door policy anymore. <laughs> You cannot just walk in the church and open the door high. We used to. Not anymore. You have to ring the bell, and the camera is sitting, and my dad's installed, and they're watching you. When we started our church previously, like, you know, years ago, 15 years ago, not the JBC, you know, and I was knocking a lot of church doors, and many churches did not open door. <laughs> they treat me like a salesperson. I don't want you to come in. That's who we are right now. So when author Hebrew is challenging us today, can you be hospitable to strangers? It requires some courage. You have to be brave enough to say, come on in. I don't know you well, but I'm not afraid. Come on in. Can you do that? Can we do that as a church? Can you do that as an individual? That's what challenge is. This is how we can love them. When you have open arms to the strangers, then this is how. This is love from God. People in prison. Verse 3. Okay? Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. Have you visited prison before? Probably not many people. Because we want to stay away from them as much as possible. We, a lot of people probably saw in prison or life in prison in the movies. We don't want to come close to it. It's a totally different world. But this author of Hebrew was telling us today, they still need to be loved. God still loves them. God is waiting to forgive them then you better have that mindset to love them. Then how should we love them? It says, remember them. And it says, F, as if you were together with them in prison. How many people think about that? They are not related to me. I need to love those people who commit crime, maybe. And a lot of people in prison without actually truly committing crime or 
having been making some mistake, and a lot of people like that too. But still, we don't really think about it. Say, oh yeah, what about them? What if if I'm there with them? What if I'm lying down in the the prison bed and the hard bed and cold facilities are bad and the food is maybe not good and all that? And if I'm there, just author of Hebrews saying, just think about that. It's like you, if you're together. And how about those people mistreated? You know, when it says mistreated, it's because of their faith. You know? They were mistreated because of faith, and they think about the suffering they're going through. In the same way, you remember them as if you yourself are suffering with them. We are too busy living our own life. We are too busy to see that what we want to accomplish and go and then be comfortable. This is our desire we don't have time to look around and look back, look down. And what about those people? And this is book of Hebrews saying that. Why? Because he's been talking about for all 12 chapters about Jesus Christ. He was talking about how superior Jesus Christ is. How great our faith is. How much of grace we have received from God. And we talk about all that. And he said, like, so since you know and you believe, let's practice in our life. And that's what he's saying. So he go beyond what we are comfortable with. Right. So think about this. I know my wife, is she here? She's not. But anyway, whenever I talk about my family, I go, are they here? <laughs> whenever we drive around in shopping center or someplace and then restaurant and have not many cars park, and then when we drive by, she goes, oh, wow, they don't have enough customers. Honey, they own the restaurant. They are richer than us. Yeah, but they should have more customers. Do you have that kind of heart? We have that love. Even though we might not be able to do everything for them or with them, at least be able to consider, at least remember and watch them. Do not treat them like they don't exist. You have to feel like, oh, what if I'm there? What if I am like them? Have compassion. That's the basic, very basic essence of being Christian. Have compassion for anyone. These authors start with very close people, right? Fellow brothers and fellow believers. Treat them like brothers and sisters, your own. And go a little further, because strangers. And then you got to have hospitality. Be able to open your home and then welcome them. And they go beyond. Criminals or people in prison. Even though you don't go to prison with them, at least remember them, think about it, and have compassion for them. And then pray for them if you can. So how to love fellow believers? Open heart. Open your heart. How to love the strangers? Open your arms. And how to love those people in prison? Open your mind. Open your heart. Open your arms. Open your mind. Be able to love all different kinds of people. And then he comes back to spouse. Very close one. Don't forget. We better know how to love our own spouses if you think about and talk about to love other people who are really far away from you. It says, first of all, it says, marriage should be honored by all. And the marriage is bad, kept pure, for God will judge the adulterers and all the sexual immoral, right? Do you love your spouse, anyone who is married? How can you love your spouse? Recite your Marriage, was you talking to each other? Making coffee. Making coffee. Okay, that's a good start. <laughs> Amen. I, I don't make coffee. Well, I don't know how, so that's not how. Recite your marriage vows daily. Recite your marriage vows every day. Don't forget what you promised. For this day, for for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for in sickness, in health, to love and to cherish, you know? The vow you made. And you have to keep on remembering. Be 
because we keep on forgetting. You better know how to love your spouse. If you do that, if you keep on reciting your vows to your spouse, there's no way possible that you will commit adultery. You fall into something that ungodly. You have to help yourself to do that. Keep remembering your promise. And if your brother or sisters forget that promise, you can remind them. Don't you forget your wedding vows. So maybe you can practice when you come and have fellowship today, lunch. You know, sit around and say, hey, don't forget your marriage vows. Because we want to have great marriage relationship at our church because there will be foundation of our faith. You cannot have great faith in God without having great relationship with your spouse. How about the leaders now, right? Verse 7, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. To consider the outcome of their way of life and imi- uh, imi- uh, in- imitate, <laughs> imitate their faith. Thank you. Okay? So when he says, remember your leaders, he's talking about previous leaders who passed away. But like a long time ago, those leaders like Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, David. Okay? Those leaders, or like I said, Jewish leaders, but anybody else you might know practically and through your life, and you have experienced so some leaders who help you and you know, guided you. So remember those leaders and follow those examples. Okay? It says, imitate their faith. Remember their faith and imitate them, follow them. This is how we can show love to them. How are you going to show your love to those people who influence you very good, nicely? How? How can you show the love to the Abraham? <laughs> By imitating their faith, by remembering what they've done. How can I show my love to my father who passed away? Remembering him. I told you before, I have a little picture of him in front of the uh, top of my monitor. I have to see him every single day, right there. I'm sure I don't need that picture to remember my dad. But I want to remember when he was younger and, and healthier. And they think about what he's done, he has done, and then try to imitate his life, right? Now, that's past, like previous leaders. How about current leaders? Now, we're going to jump to verse 17. It says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority, it says that. Now, previous leaders, you're going to imitate their faith. Now, current leaders, you have to have confidence in your leaders. That means you have to trust them. Trust their relationship, uh, the, the, the leadership. Trust their decision. Trust their maturity. You have to be able to have confidence in them and submit to their authority. Why? It says right there, because they kept watch over you as those who must give an account. They're responsible. That is why you just put the trust on them. Why do the kids Trust the parents because the parents are responsible for their kids' well-being. God chose them. God gave them authority because a lot bigger than authority is responsibility. And that makes me really nervous every time I think about that. You know, Lord, how can I be responsible for those well-being? And God is saying to me, like, why? Well, because I gave to you. That is why you submit to them. And do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. So what the Hebrew, author of Hebrews is telling us that if the leaders cannot do their work with joy, who is going to suffer? The people who are following them. Because the leaders who is going to do their work without joy cannot do their work well enough. If the, the work becomes a burden, of course they're not going to do their job well, and then you are the one who don't suffer. So trust them, have confidence in them, and they submit to them, meaning 
support them. That's what it is. So I tell my children as a father, students as a teacher, or church members as a pastor, say, please help me to help you. Please help me to help you because I cannot do all. We cannot do all. We have to help each other. So I hope you can tell each other, say, let's help them to help us. Say it with me. Can we do that? Let's help them. Who are you talking to? You got to talk to a person next to you. <laughs> let's help them to help us. Whoever that, that may be, right? It can be past Jonathan, me, or whoever it may be. Your Bible study teacher leaders. Let me help you to help me. It's God's way. Now, this author is telling us so many different people, right? And how to show our love. People so close to us. People a little far away. People we might not even know. People we might not even like or they might like us. And still there's a way for us to be able to show our love to them. And remember, that is what God desires. That is why our life began. Because if He is love, He wants us to love all. Now, how about ourselves? Before you try to even love others, you have to know how to love yourself. Do you love yourself? Have you thought about it? Do I really love myself? Or do I know, do I know how to love myself? Verse 5 is saying this. Because you cannot love others if you are miserable. Remember that. You cannot love others if you are miserable. So how to be not to be miserable? Verse 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Keep your lives free from the love of money. I ask people, do you love money? They say, no, 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 I don't love money. I just love what money can do. Exactly. People don't love money. They love what money can do. That is why Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and money. See, when you say, I love what money can do, you're telling people of me that I'm serving money. I don't need God anymore because I know what money can do. That is why it is very dangerous. Okay. People said, I have so much money, I don't need God. Do you need God? Do you need money? I'd rather have God who can give money. <laughs> And he says, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Now, people say, I like what money can do until they realize it. There's so much that money cannot buy. Until they realize money is not something that you love. Money is something that you can utilize, use for God's glory and for God's purpose. So how can I love myself? By believing what God said. By believing who God is. Because God is one who created me. God is one who promised. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. When we trust what God said, when we believe what God said, this is how we love ourselves because that gives you and me the peace. That gives you and me the joy. When you have money, well, you know, people have to have some money. I'm not saying you don't need any money. But when you depend on money, it makes you nervous. Because money has no power. It comes and goes. But God has power. So when we depend on God, then you can have peace and joy. Uh, joy. The verse 6 says it. So we say with a confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. 
What can mere mortals do to me? Right? Confidence is the best medicine. The fear is the biggest enemy. Money cannot remove my fear, but God will. Trust God. Have confidence in Him will remove all the fear. That is why I can be joyful. That is why I can be peaceful. That is why I can live longer, healthier. Because your mind, your physical body is connected. All the disease comes from the spiritual sense. How to love yourself. Are you want, do you want to be joyful every day? Yeah? Yes? No? You don't want to be? You don't care? You know how? This will be homework. Do you know how to make yourself joyful? Like, wait a minute, make myself joyful. You know, something good has to happen. So I can be joyful, no? Joy, being joyful is not respond to what things happen. God gave us the way for us to be joyful. God gave us insight for us to be joyful. We can. When we truly have faith in Him. When you experience God's presence, when you experience God's power, and truly understand what God is doing. There's nothing greater in life than that. Now, the problem we have is we don't know enough. We barely taste it. We barely know it. But we haven't tasted it truly yet. All of us. As a leader, as a pastor, I might be a little closer, maybe. But still, ways to go. Help us, God, that we can truly know how to love ourselves. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. I hope that you can say this at least a few times a day. The Lord is my helper. I will not, I will not be afraid. Whenever you face some situation challenges, the Lord is my helper. I will not afraid. It's my testimony. I had to say that about 10 times today, beginning before even they begin. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Third is love Jesus, I said. Okay. How to love Jesus? About five different things. I'm gonna really go quickly here. Right? It says there, verse 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, how to love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Do you know how to love Jesus? Do you know how to show? This is, we all have issues, right? I love my spouse, but I don't know how to show the love to my spouse. If you love Jesus, this is how you can show your love to Jesus. The verse Eight, he said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. This is how we're going to show your love to Jesus is that by knowing his essence. The way we can show our love to Jesus is by knowing his essence, who he is. Who is he? He's the second person of Trinity God who came to this world and took over man's body, right? So that is why the author says, Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is faithful. He is unchanging. That's the beginning. Knowing his essence. And then verse 9 is assuring his teaching. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. There are so strange teachings everywhere throughout the 2,000 years history or human history. Especially these days with all the internet, there's so many different strange teachings out there. And you just wander around. You go, just go here, go there. That's not the way we love Jesus. That's not the way we show our love to Jesus. It says, by assuring his teaching, know what he taught. 
He says, by all kinds of strange teachings, it is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace. Know how much of grace we have received. Know what that grace means. And then apply to that grace to other people. Right? This is how we love our Lord Jesus. Not by eating ceremonial food, which is of no benefit to those who do so. So at the time, people are teaching each other, if you eat the ceremonial food, after this wonderful ceremony, if you food, eat the food, and you're going to be good, it's going to be good for you. Very strange. But people learn. They practice. There's tons of different ones that people made and taught. So all the people who call themselves Christians kind of go here, go there. And this whole country, United States, is struggling. Not many people truly know the truth of being Christian because it's everywhere. Like we use love for so many different ways. The true love the Bible teaches it kind of fade away. The word Christian became like that. People say, I'm a Christian, but what they're saying they believe is nothing to do with what the Bible says or against what the Bible says. And they say, I'm a Christian. I said, please use something else, some other words. I don't mind what you believe, but please don't say you're Christian because that's not what the Bible says. That's not what Jesus taught. So, do not be carried away, meaning by assurance he's teaching. Okay? And then verse 10, 11, 12 says, by realizing his love, how to show our love to Jesus? By realizing his love. He says, we have an altar from, with those who minister at the tabernacle. Tabernacle is the worst place, right? The, the high priest went to tabernacle and with the blood of an animal and asked God for forgiveness. That's what they're doing in tabernacle. It's like, portable tent, okay? And, 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 and they have no right to eat. Even though they brought blood, they don't have no right. And then high priests carry the blood of animals into the whole, most holy place. You know, those, the tabernacle has a holy place and most holy of holies. And then the high priests go all the way in and as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. The bodies of animals went out all the way outside the camp. This is what happened, right? And so, Jesus also suffered outside the city gate. When Jesus died on the cross, the cross is outside the city gate. It's far away from what they call their holy thing, right? And Jesus went down totally separated from their holy place to make people holy through his own blood. Now, you don't have to kill animals anymore. You don't have to bring animals because you don't even have the right to eat those things. But Jesus, by dying and sharing his blood, he took care of it once for all. Now, when we talk about the blood of Jesus, the biggest thing comes to us is how much Jesus loved me, loved you. That should really melt people's heart. And then when he says that by realizing his love, we talk about so much, but just talking and realizing and even experiencing are different. So we have to be able to say, I'm, I've truly realized how much of love I've received from Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus' love is enough. I'm not there yet. I wish I'm there. One of these days, the Lord, your love is enough for me that I don't have to cry out for people's love. I just love them because of you love me first. As a Christian, we still cry out. Lord, we know we love you, and we know you love us, but we still desire people's love. That is why we struggle. As a Christian, instead of we focusing on loving others, we're focusing on being loved by others. And when we don't get that, we get frustrated, we get upset. That's the problem we have. And then so Jesus suffered outside the city gate that should tell us how much of love we received. And then by following his example, not just recognizing, realizing his love, but following, verse 13 says, let us then go to him outside the camp. 
bearing the disgrace he bore. So don't just sit around and be thankful. Like, Lord, you died for me. You made me holy. Through my faith in what you've done. Don't just stop there. It says, let's go to bear the disgrace he bore. Jesus is telling his disciples to take up your own cross and follow me. Right? So when we love Jesus, we have to be able to follow his example. And lastly, by believing his Promise. The verse 14 said, For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. We are looking for the city that is to come. Whose promise was that? It's a promise by Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Jesus promised to go and prepare a place for us, and then promise to come back to take us with him. That's a promise. How should we show our love to Jesus? Knowing his essence, assuring his teaching, realizing his love, following his example, and believing his promise. See, author of Hebrews is telling us very specific way. Don't just tell Jesus, I love you. When you come to church and service, like, oh, I love you. His praise is so good. Love is action. You love. That is why Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my command. Jesus did not say, if you love me, give me a big hug. If you love me, just tell me you love me. He just says, if you love me, obey my command. So, knowing his essence, assuring his teaching, realizing his love and following his example and believing his promise. Whoever wrote down, hopefully you can go through that later. Am I doing that? And if I am doing that, then I'm showing love to Jesus. And then last two verses about loving God. Like I said, God, Jesus, all together we know. But it was specifically separate that here, how to show love to God, the Trinity God, to all together. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is to offer a sacrifice. Verse 15, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of the lips that openly profess his name. You know, what God desires is not animal sacrifice anymore. God allowed that until Jesus came. And what God desires now is not an animal sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice of praise. What is a sacrifice of praise? It's honoring his name. Praise his name because of what Jesus has done. It's through Jesus because of what Jesus has done. Whenever we come to God, we praise his name. It says, a fruit of the lips that open and profess his name. Let the whole world hear what we praise. Now, don't stop praising God in the sanctuary. This is a practice. This is a promise to God. Now, throughout the whole life, throughout the whole week, when you go to Monday through Saturday, when you go out there, you're going to praise his name no matter where you go, in your office, your workplace, your home, your market, your friends, with your friends, I'm going to praise God's name. Because this is the praise of sacrifice or sacrifice of praise. To offer sacrifice. So whenever we think about sacrifice, like what do we have to really suffer and we have to give to God, the, what God desires is that let the whole world know I am your God. Let the whole world know you are my child. That you belong to me. When my kids go out there and say, oh, that's my dad. Then I become proud father. Right? This is what God desires. So every time we open our lips, am I Speaking about who God is. Am I professing his name? 
And then it ends with to be like God, not just speaking and praising his name, but to be like him. He says, do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. See, when we share, when we do good to others, we are acting like God. Because God is a giver. When we act like God, when we become like God, God will be pleased. How can we show our love to God? To offer our sacrifice. And by becoming like Him. Is how. Not just telling God that I love you. I know years ago, my, I told my wife, say, honey, I love you. And she told me, show me. <laughs> so I tried. So I ordered flowers. The first flower, she was happy. Second flower, she was happy. The whole time she says, that's all? I said, honey, I call. Yeah, that's all you do. You call. So I bought flower. I brought flower to the house. Do you love God? Really? Are you trying to show and know at least how to love God? If you love me, you love my sheep. That's what Jesus said. It is why I have to love you. We're not lovable. That is why God has to command to love each other. The book of Hebrew, an author of the book of Hebrew and his book talks about love. Know how to love others. Know how to love yourself. Know how to love Jesus and God very practically. Let's think about that. Let's practice it. And let's remind each other. And let's be proud. Because we are the one who understand it and we act upon it. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this morning, this worship, this gathering, and your presence. Lord, we talk about love so many times. But we don't really think about it a lot and how we can love the others. And we have so many different relationships. And even ourselves and love our Lord, Jesus, God. So I pray, Lord, that after we study this chapter, that we understand and that we'll practice. And most of all, Lord God, that you will be pleased by watching your children working hard to love you, themselves, and each other. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.